There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dead. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Did you after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor possibly part of a larger set. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500 VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. No, I think he had something precious underneath the clothes. They had to remove the jeans and shirt we found to get to it. And this kind of armor is often worn under fabrics. They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre, the Mazda, the Besmertis and the like. This one still has his underpants. <laughs> Fucking talking about underpants! It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. For a full set, about four years of wages. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbour Company. But that's just hearsay. Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. The pry bar in your hand is itching for some action. The metal connects with the same ding. The sound does not appear to get louder. Did you hear that? A click? This is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads the incoming energy horizontally, from plate to plate. When the plates connect, there's a click. That's the sound you heard. See these lines? Faint, organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates, until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like whirls of floorboards, the design looks organic influenced by highly resistant wood materials, like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross-sections would look like. 
The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate interconnections, peaking on the right sabaton, where you notice. The whorls are in the shape of a letter and number combination, E50-100-1000. Good. Can you read it to me? We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. This feels... dangerous. Are you sure? The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off? Even the mongrels can see you're about to put his head off. Do it, homo! Yes, that's what I said. You'll compromise the coroner's case if you do. So please, don't. Indeed, from this angle, it does look like the neck isn't going to take much more. Being dead for a week has all but liquefied his muscles. What are you trying to achieve, anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? How many clues do you need? You already found the number. Besides... There's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? You're sure there's a way to peel them off, but first the body needs to be down, and second, it would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. The anticipation makes you crack your fingers. Feels nice. Nice and cracky. Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. But we must pick our fight. Should we continue? The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Industrial strength, the can used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus. When the circus leaves town and they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. Uh, no, more like in uh, Harbor, like the one just east of here. I get a sense they used whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? No. You feel like it was something else. But what? Yes. It often is. This bell worries me. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt, buckle closes. It's what I would do. Seems easier than climbing up there. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. The concentration is highest around his heart. 
His corpse is marked by stars. Alcohol and heartbreak. A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messenian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. So am I. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. A Truget Sunshine. Mini. Shikuno? What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Yes. It is pretty cool, isn't it? There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. I'm gone. Into the wild pile yonder. In the past, way out in the west. I'm a joke. Look at me. A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Go ahead, Kobo. What do you mean? It's the power of your... Imagination. Be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He loves those. Because you're a cop Rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Coming right up. Copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting up B now. Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Listen to yourself. You're not a Raphael anything. You're probably just Harry or something. That's right. Harry. Good for you. Because you have loved 
Hated me in Provocopo. It was love all along. Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Ha! <sighs> Something is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest, and it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. Do I remind you of someone? Sure I do. You just don't want to admit it. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. I see it. His neck too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So what do you think? I agree. His personality is no longer a part of the world. Totally dead. Dabba doob doob dead. Agreed. Especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports her hanging. Everything here seems to corroborate that assumption, but we should still get him down before signing a probable cause of death. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck are you saying? Oh, f talking about shit. Maybe. I do. Most of them are post mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spot. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. But there is no breath to catch, only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. The cadaver slowly twists. The 15th Indo tribe. Because there was, the 15th Indo tribe was comprised of eight kids from Forberg and North Jamrock, running from wild dogs in the valley, hiding scents under rocks and stealing clothes off clotheslines. 
and sometimes even the copper wiring of phone lines. You may have been one of them. This must be a childhood memory. The 15th Indo tribe was your Indo tribe, set to rule in Selinda. The rest of the kids are dead now. Car accidents and drug overdoses. Only you remain. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve peers have walked here. Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Not it. Maybe more than twelve. No, eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. One, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 46. Two, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Three, hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 43. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. Five, another standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Six, an aberration, light as air, even pace, same make of boot, but number 41. Impossible to tell, could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. You're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it, and the tracks burn in the middle of it in a strange, beautiful way. Seven, the glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46, but the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Eight, and yet another standard work boot, number 44, there's an aberration in the pattern of the soul, however. The right soul is smoother, more worn. How many? I was pretty off then. I counted 20. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? A woman? Or a kid? Understood. Anything else? Two hundred? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon to be dead man. He might be right. Two hundred kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Possibly, yes. Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? A drummer only uses the right foot for the kick drum. You're right, it's stupid. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam, see whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Mm -hmm. A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashon. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. 
What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffle around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed, they all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. The man before you is naked but for a pair of underpants and white boots. His skin is marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. On his chest, a fading web of tattoos. The cargo belt used to hang him from the tree looks reinforced. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Climb up there and saw the branch? I don't trust that ladder. The assailants didn't use it. It's rotten and less sturdy than it looks. And I don't see another good way up there. Honestly, I prefer a non-acrobatic solution to this. Clown cops climb tree, fall down. Enraged cop assaults children after falling from tree. Cretin cop, they like that word, saws the branch he's sitting on, literally. Local children report corpse mutilation. Fuck yeah, climb that shit, monkeys! See, you're only making them do those things less. No, I do not see the future. I made those up using two decades in the Revacholian police force as a reference point. Oh no, we should be very afraid of newspapers, and the radio stations too. We should be wary of enticing them in any way. What I'm proposing is, we save acrobatic tricks as a last resort, after we've tried everything else. Oh, these have got to be the most fucking boring multiple parts I've ever seen! Yeah! How? Oh. Where the buckle ties the rope to the branch. That's a good spot to aim. Where? Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. I'll blow his head off. Take it! Take the shot! Yeah, take the shot! Kuno wants some of that shit! Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket. <laughs> and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. He then steps back and assumes the fellow Stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. He's gonna fucking miss! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself. God damn it. A lot of things were wrong with that shot. The Phalostes was the wrong choice. His shoulders were raised, but above all, he cannot trust his eyesight. Fucking idiot! Mukaba asshole! 
Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? No, we are lucky as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victim remains uncompromised. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. Kuno sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Beano clouds. The lieutenant doesn't say a word. Just looks at the gun in his hand. I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. You know, you don't feel like too bad of a shot yourself. It's bad as it is. Us shooting firearms like punks. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Yeah, take it, you fucking banani poika. Take it and shit yourself in the mouth. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shit himself in the mouth. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? At least you won't miss. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, slick, with the falling rain. The corpse slowly rotates. The slow movement of the branch in the wind and your shoulders directing the gun sink up, dancing hypnotically. Look, he's crying! You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? The buckle explodes into tiny pieces, coming loose with a whir. With your hand numb from the recoil, you look at the body slump down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you, looking straight at you, helpless, trapped within itself. Communism. It takes a millisecond for the association to flash within your cortex. You have no idea where it's coming from, only that it's right. Then the rigor in his muscles gives up and he smashes sideways into the spring mud, letting out a horrid stench. Ace is high. The lieutenant takes a little hop to perform the customary salutation. Your palm hurts from the slap. It's precise and down to the point. I knew these guys were f We will perform a field autopsy and determine the cause of death. But before... Excuse me. It looks like I feel like taking a break from the stench. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilations here. Just a little breather before we do the autopsy. Yes, the four phases of a murder scene. One, investigation of the scene. I'm satisfied with that part. The trash container, the prints, we've been thorough enough. Two, 
Initial examination of the victim. We were exhaustive in our efforts there. Good job. 3. Field autopsy. This will not be pleasant or easy, and it will have to be performed on the scene. The fuck are they on about? Cops are gonna cut his shit up next! Four and final, transport of the coroner's case to the district morgue. I'll do that. God, this stinks. No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain. From crime scene to autopsy to clean up, we do it all. Your station would not have assigned you the case otherwise. This case is important. In the meantime, we should try to interview Evrard Claire, the leader of the Union. Harbour property was clearly used in the hanging. The harbour just east of here. Getting in might prove a challenge, though. I would also suggest we interview Joyce, the Wild Pines representative. But we've already done that, so good for us. One down, one to go. Yes. And those were the interviewees. Let's go. man lies on his side with his eyes looking straight through you. The belt is still around his neck. His body is supine and open to intrusion by autopsy. Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. There truly is a time for everything, even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity. I'll ask you when I need you to. For the most part, maybe I should handle the contact and you take notes? That's right. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... That's you. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings, just lies there. The next box says... KK57-0803. Next. NA. Next. NA. Hmm. Roughly 50. Dry 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. Mondial. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. <laughs> fucky, fucky! Male. <laughs> Pigs can have sex! Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. 
We're still going with March 4th, 51. What else? 9. Body identified by is non applicable. 10. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. None, at least not after the initial examination. Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. They'd have to have incapacitated and carried him over. This man was more than a match for untrained dog walkers. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Coudon, the day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended, he approaches to make sure she is dead more than anything else. And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today, 42 stations of breath. We should start the post-mortem. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy of paper tries to answer why. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. <gasps> see, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. The boots are ceramic, vitreous enamel. They are fused to his skin from blood flowing downward post-mortem. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself, as you ought to, you have deserved them more than anyone else. Patience. After the autopsy, before the body is taken away, there will be a window of opportunity. After the lieutenant has gone to sleep, I hope this has helped you, my liege. The boot has a serial number. It's E50.100.1000. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alphanumerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a Trigat Mini. The deceased has a cargo lashing belt around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with the age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. 
Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs, consistent with stones thrown post mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max! Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Ligature mark. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the bell so we can get to the ligature mark. You got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now... We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See? My pig is gonna fuck his head off! No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the east. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit in there. Steady now. Like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. After some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together. Sweat forming on your brow. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia... No! <laughs> Let's get out of it, see! I fucking knew it! Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here. Battles, wars. Last item, hands. His flesh is cold, icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from and what's your name? I'm only fucking with you. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Corbo. What can I do you for, Il Corbo de Cappadocia? Nothing does. This was pleasurable. I sincerely thank you for touching my hand. We should do this more often. Be close like this, I mean. Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, the stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Central nervous system. I have nothing. 
Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. What would that be? The dead man looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. I think that may well be the moral of every story, officer. Good. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Higher bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it, gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact and remarkable. Respiratory system. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and mouth. Hepatobiliary, NA. Ah. Are you a hepatobiliary expert? Neither am I. That's it. Same for toxicology and serology, NA. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. What's next on the list? Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Be thorough if you want maximum results. Nothing, just in case. Head, chest and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Agreed. Next injury. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. The perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Right. Next. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical colon intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Think for a moment. There's time. Don't rush. Why do you say that? Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal?
Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrist. That part got blurry for me. The stench. But you are right, I was ready to call this. Now I think we should leave it empty, at least for the time being. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. It was a, an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death, which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But, personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Oh yeah, well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink is in order? Now, you see, that worries me. You will die if you drink. You know that, don't you? You are proving a useful detective. The organization would miss you. I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. For processing. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. His fingernails have turned dark. They're chipped and quite long. There is dirt under them. That's all. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination, and we need to do it fast. If you want for this task to slowly become impossible, then yes. Otherwise, no. He's been hanging out far too long already. We need to ice him. It would have to be industrial in size. Let's start by asking Gart at the Whirling in Rags and the Fritz store down at the gates. If they don't know, but only if all else fails. Fuck are you looking at, Beano man? You want a piece of the Kuno? Wanna get fucked? Only if all else fails. Mm -hmm. This is one task we cannot sideline. With every hour, whatever we are looking for will become harder to find. <laughs> 